Microsoft Access is a relational database management system, also known as an RDBMS. The structure of a database is laid out like a pyramid. This is the hierarchical structure of the information stored inside the database. We start at the top with a field, which is the smallest unit of useful information within a database. If we had a database of students, then for example a student's name or maybe their home address would be a single field within this database. The next item of information stored in a database is a record. Now a record is a collection of fields, so if a record is a complete description of a single object that we're interested in. So in this case it would be students. So a record would contain the single student information of their first name, their address, their student ID number, and their email address. Now if you store all these records together, if you had a whole bunch of students in one area, then you would store that information in a table, also known as a relation. So a number of fields are put together to form a, rec to form a record, a number of records are put together to form a relation, and a number of tables or relations are put together to form a database. So inside of a database you'll have a number of files, inside of a database you'll have a number of tables that are all related in some way. Before we start directly working with our database, we want to design our database usage ahead of time. So we can actually design our table and, in, and our database and then implement it in any relational database management system. We just happen to be using Access. So let's pretend that we have a company called Juice World and we're going to store information about different types of juice. So we're going to record information about its juice name. So we have cool names like Amazing Apple and Startling Strawberry. We have uh, the price per bottle and we want to make sure that we don't record the price per case. So that'll be something we'll have to use some data validation to take care of. And we also have some uh, taste value between uh, 1 and 5. And then we're going to record the country that the juice came from. So this is just a little look about the example that we're going to use inside the lab and in the future access videos. A primary key is often used to identify a unique field to avoid duplicates. For example, with students, there may be a Jennifer Smith, maybe many Jennifer Smiths, but each will have a unique student ID. The student ID is known as a primary key, and in Access, a primary key is often generated automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. And we're going to let Access create a primary key for us when we work with our tables. The second thing you're going to need to do after we've planned the database is finally you can implement it in a relational database management system like Access. So just as a quick summary, we're going to be looking at a relational database management system, or RDBMS. We've covered the data hierarchy or the structure of the way information is stored within a database and that includes fields, records, tables, and a database. And the database is a single file stored on the hard drive or network. So make sure you plan your design ahead of time because this will save money and time in the long run. Just as a quick refresher and some little bit of information at the end, make sure when you're opening the databases you read any of the warnings that appear on the screen. You can always open content from trusted sources and you can always trust the information that has been provided to you by Wilfrid Laurier University. Make sure you save the files to your home directory or onto your hard drive. Never open files directly from the internet. So when you're downloading the files, save them to your hard drive first. Learn about where you're storing them on your hard drive or your network drive and then you can open them and use them for your work.